Welcome back, Jayhawks fans, to over 50. So we just saw the Kansas Jayhawks drop a game, lose a game that they had total control of in the first half, the first half of the first half, and then end up dropping it 80 to 70 at Baylor. Um, a difficult place to play. I'm not making any excuses, but uh, Kansas didn't play their best basketball. I will uh, just do a quick dive into the stats here, but I want to talk about it again. I know I'm going to hit the rebounding thing, but I made some notes as I was watching the game. And when the score was Kansas 16, Baylor 4. Kansas had a rebounding edge of 13 to 3. And if you look at how the game finished out with the rebounds, Kansas had 38 rebounds total. Baylor had 40. What I've been saying all along is how this game, how this Jayhawks team is going to either win games or lose games, it's going to come down to rebounding the ball. When they had that rebounding edge, they were smoking Baylor. Baylor couldn't do anything. Baylor was 0 for 8 from threes. I mean, every loose ball was coming their way. I mean, you scroll up and look at the stats. I mean, you know, McCormick, he had a good game. 10 points, 13 rebounds. He did his job. Brown, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Abaji, 27.6 rebounds. Um, you know, Wilson only coming in with seven points, three rebounds. You know, kind of a little bit of an off night for him, but uh, just didn't work. They just weren't playing great defense. And then, like I said, they did most of the rebounding damage in the first part of the game. I mean, you know, 16 of the, what did I say, 38 rebounds? 38 rebounds. So 16 of those were in the first half. So that meant that they basically – Almost half the rebounds that they had was in like the first four minutes of the game. And the rest of the game, Baylor out-rebounded them. And thus, Baylor was able to come back and take a lead at the half by one point. And then Baylor was able to add, tack on another, you know, 11 or nine points in the second half, you know, to end up winning by 10. But uh, the Big 12 championship is not out of – it's not out of the question. Kansas can still take that. Uh, I think maybe arguably have an easier, an easier chance to do that. Um, I'll get to, I'll get into that in a minute. But um, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Subscriptions would really help me out. Smash the like button. Comment down below. Share this video with your friends out there. And let's take a look at the schedules. So if we look at Kansas's schedule, the remaining schedule, they have three games. Baylor only has two. Kansas has three games due to the postponement of the TCU games due to the COOF. So they're at TCU on March 1st, and then they're back against home or at home hosting TCU on Thursday, March 3rd. And then Saturday, the last game of the season, number 20, Texas comes to town. So I, I'm not saying TCU is a horrible team. TCU is probably going to make a tournament, make the tournament this year. Uh, I don't think they'll have any issue getting in, especially – with their victory over Texas Tech today. Baylor, on the other hand, even though they only have two games left, they have to go to Texas, so that's not going to be easy. Texas has been playing well as of late, and um, you know Chris Beard's going to have something for Baylor. And I would watch this Iowa State game, because Iowa State get, gave Baylor a run for their money way back in, and I want to look and see, because Baylor won like the first 15 games and you can see, so this is, let's see, what game was that that they, let's see, there was three, five, seven, eight, ten. So the 13th game of Baylor's season. So, you know, this was during their 15-game win streak. Iowa State had that game, and they gave it up at the end. So now Baylor has lost some players. You know, they've got players that are just coming back from injury. This isn't the same Baylor team that Iowa State played. And I don't think Iowa State's a team that anyone really wants to, to take lightly. I mean, if there was a team in the Big 12 that you, you, know, you would want to play, I would say it'd be West Virginia just because they just don't have the offensive forces to get the job done, even if they are playing at home in Morgantown. I mean, they lost by one in Morgantown today, you know, two, I think two Texas. So 
you know, it's, it's, that's kind of a changing of the guard sort of a little bit that West Virginia has fallen off um, so poorly. But uh, Joe Blonardi just released his new, his new uh, potential brackets, and he has Kansas as the third number one seed with Auburn dropping to the fourth number one seed, and he projects Baylor after their win tonight to move up there. So you would have Kansas and Baylor both um, holding numbers, number one seeds right now as the as the season stands now of course you know all that could change i mean gonzaga the last time i checked they were down even though it was early they're down to saint mary's so if gonzaga loses that game to saint mary's i think i think they'd have to fall off the the number one line um i don't know if they would fall out of the number one seed discussion but i mean definitely there would be some discussions there because you know, you're in the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga should roll through everybody in the West Coast Conference. So if they have a problem doing that, I would I could see some movement there. So there's been a lot of ranked teams that were on the road today that had issues, but that's what I've got for you. Um, you know, it's just another one of those games where if Kansas doesn't rebound, and you see it right here, 38 rebounds, and it doesn't look like much, they only out rebounded by two. But remember almost half of these rebounds that they had half of these 38 were in like the first five minutes of the game when Baylor was calling timeouts and couldn't afford to wait for the TV timeout because things were getting out of hand. If Kansas plays like that consistently and rebounds consistently through a game, I don't think anyone can stop them, but um, that's what I got for you. So I'm going to sign off again. If you're uh, new here, hit the subscribe button, like the video, hit the like button, share, this video with your friends out there if you have any comments drop them down below and until uh tuesday march 1st when uh the jayhawks travel to tcu to play jamie dixon and the horn frogs uh if i don't talk to you before then take care and rock chalk <laughs>